Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel today. Uh, we are closing in on 900 subscribers as of this evening, so that's awesome. Super excited to see that. Thank you all so much for the support. Today we're going to be going through some of the essentials for maintaining your pocket knives. Um, whether you're a collector or you work every day with them, um, these are some of the most important tools for you to have to kind of maintain them, keep them in good working order, especially if you've got higher end pocket knives. You want to make sure that they're taken care of and well maintained. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to talk about today is a great set of Torx bits. Um, this is Weha. They are fantastic. I've never had any problems with them. A lot of people online recommend them. I think you can get this set for like 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, it goes, I think this is three or four, T3, four to 10. Yes, T3 right there all the way up to T10. They're not in order here, but T10 is the biggest one. Um, some knives also have bigger than T10. So I have another Craftsman thing, a couple bucks from Home Depot. I also have a cheaper Husky one, um, which is also Home Depot brand. You don't really need uh, super nice Torx bits, but these will last you forever um, and they will not strip your screws. So that is a huge plus of having a high quality set of I prefer the screwdrivers. Some people just like the little bit drivers where you kind of can take them out and put them in and change them out. But I prefer to have the full screwdriver. That's just a personal preference. Um, but that will help you kind of tweak and maintain your pocket knives, take them apart, put them back together without having to worry about stripping screws. It's the, the proper way to do it. Second thing is going to be some oil. So all different kinds of oil. There's a million different kinds, lots of schools of thought. Um, I just have REM oil because I have that laying around for other things. Um, this is for specifically what Microtech recommends that you use to maintain their knives. Um, spray REM oil, flood the whole chassis with REM oil, and um, then dump it out, clean it off. That's how they recommend that you maintain them. So that's why I have that. Otherwise, I've had this bottle REM oil. You can see, I don't know how to show it on camera. Uh, still a ton of oil left in there. I've had this for almost probably two years now and uh, you know it's lasted forever and I have a ton of pocket knives that I use and other stuff that I use it on. So this is like eight bucks from wherever you can buy it. Uh, got local gun shop, Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, Academy Sports, all kinds of places have this. Uh, it's, it's gun oil officially, but it'll work well on knives. There's also uh, mineral oil, which is food safe. So if you're going to be cutting up food with your knives, you want to make sure that you know, you're using food safe oil and not REM oil um, because this is not, do not ingest REM oil. That's not going to be good for you. They're right on the package, harmful or fatal if swallowed. So don't, don't use that on knives that you're going to be cutting food with, especially frequently. Um, there's also, I think KPL or knife pivot lube is specifically designed for pocket knives. Um, you have to order that online. I prefer to just buy stuff in store. That's just a, a preference thing. So definitely look into that. Check that out. I, I think they're supposed to be a very nice brand of oil. Um, or you can use all different kinds of stuff. However, I would try to stay away from WD-40. Um, apparently that will gum up the internals of your pocket knife and you'll have to clean it more frequently versus if you're just using something like this. I don't even, the REM oil I don't think is like the most recommended thing either. It's not perfect, but it definitely gets the job done. Um, I don't have any issues with with using it. So uh, I would, you know, I recommend this to anyone. It's a couple bucks. You don't have to order online. You can just run in the store and pick it up. So you need oil for pocket knives. Um, third thing, Loctite. Uh, I know a lot of people, when I was getting into pocket knives or, you know, guns or whatever, a lot of people have never heard of Loctite or thread locker. Um, some of you are probably thinking that's insane. How have you never heard of <laughs> thread locker? Uh, but I, I had never heard of it. I know lots of people haven't heard of it, so I'll just touch on it briefly. This is almost like a, a glue that you can kind of put onto your screws. So you'll take out the pivot screw and you'll put some Loctite on it. And when you let it dry, it'll prevent the uh, pivot screw from twisting and turning around when you're opening and closing a pocket knife all the time. Um, same with guns. You're supposed to put that on any screw that you have on, on a part that you can get like real hot or is moving around frequently or getting jostled around. Um, so super helpful. Again, really cheap. You can order this online or a lot of stores have it too. You can just go in store and, and buy it. I think like even Home Depot has stuff like this. So everywhere you can buy it. You don't have to have a local gun shop nearby, uh, but a lot of them will sell it. So this is super, super helpful, not just for knives, but for lots of other things. Um, and that's, I, I would put that as one of the essentials for uh, maintaining your, your pocket knives. It's really good to have on hand to just take care of them. Again, 
This is a tiny little bottle. I've had this for a very long time. You're not going to run out of it, especially if you're, you know, using it properly, not drowning your screws in, in Loctite, which you shouldn't be. Uh, now the fourth thing, kind of a big thing here, um, but I'll, I'll do another video on this later to touch on it, is a good sharpener. Um, this is a good sharpener. This is a tiny sharpener. It has everything you need. It has a real coarse stone, uh, less coarse stone, ceramic rod, and a strop, so leather. So that's you can get any, pretty much any knife razor sharp with just this. This is like 30 bucks, work sharp, field sharpener. Check it out. Um, it's got angle guides on there. So that's something when I first started sharpening, it's, it's real difficult to hold a, a good angle. So there's angle guides. So you just rest knife on there at the proper angle, drag it along, keep going back and forth, uh, polish it on the ceramic stone and on the leather strop and you'll have a razor sharp knife. It's super easy to use. Work sharp, work sharp makes some great products. This is probably number one product. I would say it's all in one, super cheap, super easy to just throw in a bag and, and carry with you wherever you go. Um, and it works and it lasts. So definitely check this out. Um, I have a ton of work sharp products. There's also like a super cheap stone. I think it's Husky. Yeah. So Home Depot Husky. Um, not the best. It's, it's a little more difficult to learn how to use like a stone and this is a real coarse stone. Um, so like a lot of working knives, I'll just use this on or tools. You can use this on as well, but it's super cheap and easy to use. Um, I also just got the WorkSharp Precision Adjust, which is like 60 bucks. This thing is awesome. Um, if you're getting a little more into knives, I'd recommend this too. Absolutely worth the... Um, price even when compared to the field sharpener i mean this doesn't have the, the leather strap but this is super easy to use you see this little thing right here i'll do another video again on all these but um lets you adjust the angle makes it idiot proof basically to just go back and forth sharpen your knives get a real polished edge um, but definitely invest in a decent sharpener 30 bucks it's worth it you won't have to pay someone to sharpen your knives. You won't have to deal with sending. Like if you've got a bench made, you don't have to send it back. Um, you can learn how to do a better job than they will uh, sharpening your edges on a bench made. So worth investing. Um, fifth thing I think we're on now, just some compressed air. This is Walmart compressed air. I don't have an air compressor. I don't have room to store one. So I just have a can of compressed air just to spray out some of like the gunk in pocket knives. Uh, you'll see like dust and dirt will get in there. Uh, Microtex, if you need to clean a Microtech, you just spray some compressed air in there after flooding it with rim oil and it'll, it'll clean it right up. Um, but again, all those things, super cheap, like cheap, cheap, and uh, real cheap sharpener. Perfect. All you need right there to take care of really high end pocket knives. This is exactly what I use right here. I have some nicer sharpeners, a little bit nicer torque sets, but Everything you see here is real cheap. Um, and one of the last things I'll say, a cutting board. I film my videos on a cutting board. This is a cheap cutting board. Uh, it's bamboo. So there's plastic, bamboo, and wood. Wood is definitely gonna be the most expensive cutting board, uh, but it is actually best for your knives if you're cutting frequently on it. I don't do a whole lot of cutting. I kind of just film videos on this. Um, but wood is, is definitely gonna last the longest if you take care of it. It's the best for your knives. It won't dull your knives. Plastic, um, I, some of you may be health conscious out there. Uh, when you're cutting food on plastic, there'll be lots of razor shreds of plastic that will get in your food. So I try to stay away from that. Um, but they are very cheap, so it's not gonna kill you, but you know, definitely something to, to note. And bamboo, which is actually, I did not know this, bamboo is actually um, harder than wood. It's almost like ceramic. So when you're cutting your knives, you're dulling them faster on this. If you're really you know, hitting on the bamboo and, and cutting like that, that's gonna dull your knives a lot faster than wood. So if you, if you have the money and you really want the best of the best, um, get, get a, invest in a good wooden cutting board and make sure you take care of it properly. You just gotta look up how to take care of it. Uh, keep it clean so the stuff doesn't seep into it. But, you know, bamboo looks like wood. And, you know, if, you, if you're just cutting with lower end kitchen knives, it doesn't really matter too much. Even if, even if you're cutting with nice pocket knives, you can just touch them up a little bit on the sharpener after. But just thought I would share what information I know with you. So, um, again, Torx bits, uh, that's essential. Sharpener, oil, Loctite, and some compressed air and you will be good to go with pretty much any price range of pocket knives that you use. Um, and 
again, if you have any questions, as always, please let me know. If there's any videos you'd like to see, let me know. I'm going to try and do a video on a lot of different sharpeners um, and some other stuff, how to kind of break in pocket knives and things like that. So hopefully you find those helpful. And uh, again, just let me know. Thank you to all of those of you who have subscribed for this long and supported the channel. It means a lot to me. We're closing in on a thousand here, which is unbelievable. So again, I, I really appreciate the support and thank you for watching.